North Carolina State had a net of 33 and missed the NCAA tournament. Todd Golden's strength of schedule much better than that NC State's team was. Well, and this would be interesting, right? Because we get through tonight, and then you get the semifinals Monday, the championship game on Tuesday, and the teams can all dream of a conference title. Tonight for these two teams, really those NCAA tournament hopes are looming so large. It, it's 40 minutes of focus right now for both these two teams. Chris Wayne misses the shot. Rebound BYU. Cougars have the ball. Up to 9-7, still very early from the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. It's been a great home for this WCC tournament now for many years. We're talking about the young head coach, who's still one of the youngest head coaches in all of D1. Todd Golden, third year, he's done an outstanding job. This is one of the best Don's teams they've had in decades. Well, and, and he's built it the right way, and he's been smart about it. He's been patient in the building process of this program. And taking it from where Kyle Smith left it, to improving it now in year two and, and having them on the precipice of making the NCAA tournament for the first time since 98. Turn over Barcelo, Jamari Bouye in the open court. What a move. Little inside out. Good job attacking the paint. It's twice now that Bouye's been able to get downhill on BYU. Almost pass that went into the first row. Lucas kept that pivot foot down. George went middle, dumped it down, and Ali Atiki missed the hook. Tip by Loner, no good. And a defensive rebound from Markovetsky. He's got an amazing personal story. We talked to him last week when we were in the Bay Area, right, right when his home country of Ukraine was invaded by Russia. And he told us how concerned he was for his family's safety. His father would likely be part of the conflict. His younger sister is 11 years old, and. It's tough for him to focus right now on basketball, but out here trying to play a big role in a big game. What a look from Bouye to Shabazz, who hit the three to put USF back ahead. I mean, it's just hard to imagine Volodymyr Markovetsky, how much he has on his mind these days. And yet here he is in the first half of a monstrous game for his team, giving Todd Golden some good minutes. Challenge that shot. I think forced the missed and grabbed the rebound. Yeah, I like his size, and I think that adds a lot in particular in this game. Look Shabazz, out. another three, and it's a little too strong. That one looked like it was going down. Now these guards for San Francisco are fantastic. I mean, if, if you're not a fan of the West Coast Conference, this is the first time you've seen them. The reason why San Francisco's a tournament team is these guards. And not only are they a tournament team because of it, but they could win a game in the NCAA tournament because of it. Maybe a numbers advantage for USF. Richwain goes all the way for the layup. What happens is Shabazz clears out space going to the corner. That created the seam for Wishwain to attack, and Mark Pope's going to take a timeout. 7 0 run for the Dons. Well, look, for, for San Francisco, they can go on a little spurts, and it's been a coach, excellent coach. He's done a terrific job. BYU, you mentioned it just a minute ago. Joe Lenardi has them right now in the field. They're the five seed in this West Coast Conference tournament. WCC's never had four teams in a single NCAA tournament. They have a great chance to do it, but those hopes are really riding on the Cougars playing well tonight and coming up with a win. Yeah, the, the conference, by the way, is, will, will tell you that they're a four-bid league. You know how I know that? I get texts every day that says hashtag four-bid WCC. But it's, it's been a great year for the conference. Yeah. And, you know, Mark Pope and this program have been through a lot this year. BYU fans, are, they understand what this program's gone through. And you lost both your starting front court players, Richard Harwood first, and then Gavin Baxter. And now they're playing without Seneca Knight tonight. So, I mean, they've dealt with a rash of injuries. I think it's led to some inconsistencies in the way that they're, they've played. But nevertheless, here we are. Even with a four-game losing streak, first time that's happened in the program since 2005, with a chance to control your own destiny. Win here tonight, and you can start feeling like maybe a tournament bid is, is a reality. All right, Bouye and the Dons with the ball after an offensive foul. Mark Pope did not love that call. Bouye, three, no. Rebound tapped around, and out of bounds off of BYU. Even though uh, Mark Kovetsky was diving to try to save it in, it's off of the Cougars. BYU always travels well. There are lots of BYU fans. 
Watch this as it's going out of bounds. I thought this was off of Mark Levesky. Well, he never touched it. He did. Looked like he did. He did. Shabazz gets in the lane, switch to the left hand, missed it. I thought he should have just done the, the teardrop with his right. And he, he made that shot more difficult than it needed to be. For a great young player, not a player on the perimeter, and he stepped on the out of bounds line. That's a turnover. Miscommunication between those two BYU players. Five point lead for the Dons. We're going to be here for BYU, USF, quarterfinal game number one in the WCC. Vegas is popping. Yeah. Lots of big events. UFC happening. 272. Yeah. Of course, you can watch that on ESPN Plus pay per view. Okay. And you can stream it and still watch this game. So that's a double dip. Okay. We got NASCAR tomorrow. Not on the ESPN family network. No, but still big event. All right. We got the WCC tournament, the Pac 12 tournament, the Mountain West tournament, the Big West tournament, the WAC tournament. All here. Isn't there a country music award show? The ACMs are Monday night. I was hanging out with Dolly Parton earlier. Yeah, amazing. It's amazing. Hi, by the way. Yeah, she's yeah, Big fan of the Giants. A lot like that guy at Whole Foods today. Trevin Nell and BYU. I'm trying to break the scoring drive. It's been more than four minutes since BYU had a point. Gideon George, nice pass. That'll end the drought. Anytime you force the back line of the defense to vacate who they're guarding, if you have a good passer, a capable passer, it's going to be an easy two. Well, that one really guarded the Sosky, and he just flung it up there. I mean, that wasn't even a shot attempt. I, I, I don't get that. He was basically unguarded. Trevin Bell coming off a nice game, throws that one up and in. He doesn't miss in this building. He loves playing at the Orleans Arena. He had a very inconsistent year, and I think a down year compared to his expectation level. So what did he do when he showed up here last night? Went for 15. And if he puts up 15 tonight, BYU is going to win this game. I mean, I, I've said it all year long. You need complementary players to step up. It can't all be on Barcelo. And that was a great dump down pass, and Foose able to finish it. And then the next possession, trying to get downhill. That's one thing that Mark Pope told us today when we talked to him. They want to get downhill. They want to be aggressive. They want to score in the paint. Right now, 10 of their 13 have come in the paint, Dave. Had a very memorable WCC champ game last year. Trevin Nell against undefeated Gonzaga. Had 15 in the first half. BYU led at halftime, almost knocked off. The Zags ended up with a career high. Lots of dogs have gone a little quiet on the offensive end. That's a foul called against Stefanini. He has not played particularly well down the home stretch. He had a really nice stretch of play for the Dons. And he's coming back out of the game. You know, the game that's significant is this. It's the team that is mentally prepared that will likely come out ahead here. I mean, the physical aspects of it by this time of the season, you know what you want to do. But are, are you detail-oriented enough to be disciplined enough to hold to those details for longer than your opponent does. Lucas went by Shabazz. Now Gideon George, and that's another foul against USF. BYU's movement right now is forcing San Francisco to chase. They're, they're rotating, and then they're trying to recover. They're putting out fires. On defense, you don't want to have your fires to put out. You want to be able to control it by staying disciplined. San Francisco, that's an offensive foul. Yeah. That's easy. San Francisco, one of the better defensive teams in all of college basketball. Ranked 20th in Ken Palm and adjusted defenses. Now look, they have two big men. They got two quick guards who can harass and put a lot of ball pressure on. They've got Misalski and Patrick Tape, who had a good career in the Ivy League, played a year at Duke, and is finishing up his college career at USF. He was not in attendance tonight as a former player. He was not. Neither was Chris Burgess, the assistant coach of uh, BYU. They had something as important as that was, a little more important. Weaving his way through traffic. Good defense again from the Cougars. Gideon George slapped it out of bounds. Shot clock down to seven. Drive with purpose, drive with awareness. Rich Wayne that time drove into traffic in trouble. Spencer 
Johnson trying to steer Shabazz the other way. Shabazz dribbled to his right anyway. Heaved up the three. Rebound Cougars. That's a shot Mark Pope will say, hey, we'll give that one up. Now with Nell and Barcelo on the bench, to me, I want to get the ball to 45 somehow. If I can, if I can get 45 posted up, that's a good thing. That possession was not a good thing. Just an unforced error. Turnover BYU. Now it's the Dons who've gone more than three and a half minutes without scoring. So you're saying this game is a game of spurts so far? And part of it is the familiarity at this point in the year in conference play. Triore, great play to reach around and steal it away. Richwain went for the steal and didn't get it. Gideon George on the attack. George, yes. That's because Rich Wayne gambled and reached at this end, was late in his recovery at the defensive end, and that's what allowed George to get into the paint. BYU back ahead. A 6-0 run for the Cougars. Whoops. Dribbled it off his foot. Out of bounds. Dave, let's go back to that previous possession. You get the steal, right? Foose with a great steal. Here comes the pass. Watch this. Rich Wayne is in perfect position. He gives up that position. And see how his body weight carried him to the baseline. Gideon George did an excellent job attacking his right foot, getting a piece of the paint. BYU survived some minutes without Alex Barcelo. That can be a challenge for the Cougars sometime. He won't miss many minutes in this game. Up top to George, who gets fouled from behind. Whistles are starting to pile up. A total of 10 fouls called in this game already. Dave, I did want to let you know I checked. There is no cougar tail in Las Vegas. The, uh, you can't get cougar tail in Vegas. The giant uh, two-foot-long maple bar with yes. the serve in Provo. Yeah. Just, just clarifying for the audience. I was going to get you. I was going to get you a small maple bar uh -huh. just to make you feel like Ten. you were still in Provo. Triore tried to dunk it home. He gets fouled. <laughs> Would have sounded like we were in Provo if that thing had gone down. As it, they, I mean. Whoever they, loses they, they this would game be, will have six or we'll have seven, seven WCC yeah. losses. They could be the first ever to do it. And there's a first time for everything. And in, in this league, with what they've done this year, scheduling purposes, the league office has done a tremendous job working with teams, trying to make sure that they upgrade their schedules. And both of these programs play very difficult non-conference schedules. Freshman Traore makes both free throws. BYU, two shaky moments early in this one. Back up by three, under eight to go, first half. In a game where we figure that'd be true as it plays out. Coonan just heaved that one up. Wild shot for Josh Coonan. There's been far too many wild shots by USF. I mean, they, they are not valuing their shot attempts right now. Ugly offense for the Dodds. Lucas went right by Bouye. No whistle. Bouye comes away with the ball. USF can get something in transition. Bouye blocking foul. Marcelo tried to sell the charge, but a block. Dave, we're going to have a lot of free throws in this game. We are. And but foul those... trouble, you know, neither of these teams, you mentioned the injuries for BYU. USF has developed a little depth, but not like they love to go real deep into their bench. Foul trouble could be an issue, not just because of the free throws. Salski has had a really uneven start to this game. I mean, they, they just left him. I mean, Gideon George was on him, and he looks like it's like the ball's like a hot potato. Yeah. The whole USF team, you could say that. Salski falling down. Tape goes to the basket, has stripped away, and now Mark Pope is losing it. He's not happy with the way this first half is being officiated. And I don't, I don't know if I disagree with him on that last one. That's not a foul. No, that's all ball. You can hear it. That, that, that is not a foul. That's anticipating the foul instead of seeing it and reacting to what's in front of you. Cafe. And, and look, first free throw. It's also the second personal against 
Lucas. So not only is it costing Mark Pope points, but Tijon Lucas has two fouls now. So I don't blame him for being upset. Mark still letting him know about it. I mean, look, this game matters. I mean, you know, there's, there's every game matters. Okay, so this, this idea that the games don't matter even in November, that's not true because we're talking about them still today. But this game tonight matters greatly to both of these two teams. That foul against Stephanie. Yeah, you can feel it in the arena, the emotion, the energy, the tension on the sidelines. And you hope that a game this big, the players, the coaches rise up to meet the moment. And you have to say, you hope that the officials do too. Yeah. It's a big game. You've got to have performance on all sides. Seven team fouls now against the Dons. Next foul against BYU will be their seven. Not even close. Man, he is, he is a good natural shooter who is in such a shooting punch, it's hard to believe. Bouye, step back too good. Those are the shots I want to see Bouye get to. I mean, if he can get a seam, that's great. But on balance shots for San Francisco are good shots, especially if it comes from their two guards. Tie game 17 apiece. Right, against Masalski. No. Bouye has been great on the glass so far. Bouye used the screen. And got the ball to bounce in. A three for Jamari Bouye. And a little smile on his face. He knew he got a break on that one. He's got nine. This is a shooter's gym. I mean, we've seen that over the years, Dave. Uh, for whatever reason, shooters love shooting in this gym. Sometimes you come to these neutral site arenas where there's not quite the backdrop you have in your normal venues, and shooters struggle. Not here. You were killing Tilly a couple of years ago. Oh, he never missed. Couldn't miss. Gideon George shot rejected. Masalski comes away with it. Stop. Big man does. He listened to you. I mean. Bouye elevated. Oh, Tape who will go back to the free throw line. The pass. Masalski though, he's out of control. He right? is. You know, and sometimes that happens. It's, it's, it's an important game for your team. It's, it's a game that matters for NCAA tournament. Livelihood for your program. You win tonight. It's a quad one win for either one of these two teams because of how highly ranked they are in the net. But you've got to slow down and play with composure. And, and right now, he is just, he's all gas, no breaks. Yeah. And his fellow big man, Tape, is at the free throw line. But Darren Masalski, he's a fiery, energetic guy. First year at USF. And this is the biggest game. I mean, this is the biggest game he's ever played in, isn't it? It is. I mean, look, we were there for the Gonzaga game. Had they won that game, they'd be so far in the field it wouldn't even matter what they did in Vegas. They lost that game. This now becomes the biggest game at USF since 1998. They had a monster lead at home against St. Mary's. Frank Alaco with the catch, by the way. Yeah, good, good administrator, play, former coach. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. Played football at Notre Dame. So that, that's good qualifications athletically. Yeah. Son played in the WCC at St. Mary's. Any other Alaco family history you need to know? <laughs> Just like Todd Golden did, played at St. Mary's. Marcelo came up way short. Shabazz trying to beat everybody down the floor. He might do it. He'll go to the free throw line, and he hit the floor hard. Man, he started to get real physical. He's already got that face mask on. He was not going to slow down. What I love about the guards of San Francisco is they will rebound the ball, and as soon as it touches their hands and they get the rebound, they are looking to push and probe. And if they find a scene that they feel they can exploit, they're going to take it. And that was a little bit out of control, but Shabazz was able to find enough of a scene to get the contact and get to the free throw line. Shots for Khalil Shabazz. Barcelo now with two personal fouls. So the two starting guards, the two arguably most important players, for BYU, each with two personals. Shabazz and Bouye right now have combined for 16 of the 22 points. That's a problem if you're Mark Pope. Yeah, not a problem if you're Todd Golden. No, you love that if you're Todd Golden. Because your guards are the heartbeat of your team. Your bigs are important, 
but it's your guards that are the, the lifeline, the experience, you know, the emotion of senior day that we were there for. This is the group that he wanted to get to the tournament because of those senior guards, and that's what you rely on in March. This has turned into a 9-0 USF run. Lucas winding his way closer to the basket. Nifty. Guys played in the Big Ten, had a lot of success in the Horizon League, finishing his career at BYU. He's been indispensable. Well, and he told us a couple weeks ago, listen, when he made the move here, and it's him and Barcelo used to talk on the phone every single day even before he showed up to campus. Is it with the talk of getting to the NCAA tournament? They need to get some stops because right now San Francisco is starting to find themselves at the offensive rhythm. Yeah, after that ugly stretch offensively for the Don Stefanini. Knocked down that three. Loner almost just fumbled it away. Trevin Nell on the free throw line. He missed a shot here. Doesn't happen that often. Masalski running the floor. Bouye, three in transition. Too strong. And they're going to call a foul against Yowen Masalski. And now he can't believe it. Uh, I'll be honest, I thought that was a BYU player running into a BYU player. But whatever. Under mid selection Sunday, it's going to be a great two weeks. And to, I agree with him. Todd Golden's team is an NCAA tournament team. Now, I don't think personally that they have to win this game to get in, but I certainly think that if they won this game and had a quad one victory tonight, they're breathing easy regardless of what happens on Monday night. Uh, and it is so cool. This is quarterfinal night in the WCC, a so-called mid-major conference. Tape, the three, way off the mark. They've got more projected teams in the field right now than the Pac-12 does. Amazing. The stakes in a game three days before the championship game in this conference. Unprecedented, really. Lucas, not facing the bucket, couldn't quite spin it home. He's only made that one three-point basket. Huge difference in the first half. Stefanini, some nifty ball handling, and he got fouled shooting the jump shot. That's going to be number three against Lucas. I thought he did touch him. Foul trouble is going to be a huge issue for BYU here. This game has been officiated very tightly. Yeah, and I understand why there's been frustration on both sides, but that for Tijon Lucas, you can't even come close. No. You already have two fouls on a jump shot, tough jump shot like that. Never foul a jump shooter. Stefanini makes the first. Now champ week continues tomorrow, Sunday. Five women's basketball title games, ACC champ game at noon Eastern on ESPN. Then you get the SEC championship game after that on ESPN2. You got the A-10, you got the Big Ten, and at 3 o'clock Pacific, you got the Pac-12. Stanford will try to cement its status as a number one seed. Utah surprise went over Oregon yesterday. Uh -huh. uh, I went over and saw Stanford play. Cameron Green, if you haven't watched awesome. her play, she is so much fun to watch. And Haley Jones, that Stanford team has looks the part of a team that's ready to defend its national championship. Out of bounds. BYU had the offensive rebound but couldn't keep it in bounds. Cameron Brink, close personal friends with the Curry family. Really? Yeah. How? They've become bigger. She's from East Bay, come become fans of her game. Steph is a big Love admirer. It. Love it. Did not know that. BYU's women's team will probably be in the championship here. I'm not putting the cart before the horse, but they've had a great season. Little Shabazz back in the game. They left him open. He came up short. He drifted a little bit on that shot. He wasn't completely set. Straight up, straight down. That's a mate. Marcelo didn't take the layup, found Nell for three, in and out. Rebound Gideon George. Marcelo goes baseline. Marcelo wants it back. What a quiet first half offensively. George, a wraparound pass stolen away. Dave, Mark Levetsky has actually played really good in the defense for San Francisco. Is the most significant minutes he's played in a long time. He just tried. Which, yeah, there was a little dispute about that. Basically, every call we've had in this first half has somebody raising eyebrows, throwing hands up in the air. It's much. <laughs> it is. It's the time of year where you're fighting for every edge. 
Tech typically takes really good care of the ball. One of the best turnover teams in the country over the last couple months. Challenge and good with a foul. Now, that was a correct call by Tommy Nunez. But the official underneath the basket should have been the one that made the call. I mean, this, this is clearly a foul. Watch as he goes up. He just slaps him right on the arm. Big bucket for BYU. Traore, who there have been times. Already. I, I know. He, I was just about to say that. There have been times where he has saved BYU. As a freshman who really was not expected at the start of the year to play big minutes at all. I talked to Mark Pope on the phone back in October. He's like, you're going to really like this guy. I think he's going to be good next year. <laughs> Wrong. He's good right now. And, he, and they so needed great. him too. Yeah, they needed him. Shabazz finds Tape, who gathered, tried to dunk it, couldn't finish. Sloppy and it turns into a turnover and they call a foul against USF. Whistle came in late. And that's going to be a couple free throws for BYU. And I'm not saying that it wasn't a foul, but when the other team is sort of two strides already in the other direction, then the whistle comes. You're just asking for more complaining. Two fouls against Khalil Shabazz. I love this intensity. Yeah, me too. I've missed this. Look, look, last year you and I called this tournament. I was calling it from a, a cabinet in, in Bristol. Like, I mean, literally, <laughs> you were in your house in San Francisco, and it, it just wasn't the same. You know, I mean, now we're here. There's everybody's back in the building. This league has had such a great season. It means so much. Both free throws good. BYU's chipped away. A physical, low-scoring first half. With that intensity that you're talking about. Bouye now matched up with Caleb Lohner. I'd clear out and let him go. Yeah. Good defense by Caleb Lohner. This game used a little pass fake. No on the three. Loose ball, BYU has it. Good look. A three by Barcelo here, and they could take, uh, you know, tie this game. Oh, Cruz should have just handed it to him. Spencer Johnson. Shot clock to 10. Traore, he traveled. Yeah. That's really not his game. It will be. Not yet. It will be. And when he gets that, Oh, it's going to be fun. And Todd Golden's going to call. He knows the expectations. He knows where they want to go. And he's putting it on his shoulders. And he's going to do all he can tonight to try to figure out a way how to win this game. Two-time All-West Coast Conference first-teamer. He's on the bench with two fouls. Shot Final shot five. here. One or zero has to take it. One or zero has to take it unless they help off and somebody's wide open. Wants a screen. Johnson almost stole it away. Bouye down to two. Top three. No. Off iron. And the teams are going to go to the locker rooms. Almost went down. Intense first half. Not always pretty, but the Dons with a three point. I like when he's in this headspace because he can go for a full 40 and he's not going to stop. And so I, I think you got to continue to play through him. Shabazz can also pick up his game a little bit. Didn't shoot it exceptionally well. When you're talking about Jamari Bouye, one of the great players really in the history of USF basketball. And they've had a lot of great players. Oh Triori, they left him wide open and he dunks it home to start the half. That is uncharacteristic for USF's defense. Yeah, but that was a design play by Mark Pope in the locker room. You know, hey, this is what we're going to run. We're going to get the dunk. And they did it. Masalski really struggled in the first half, and that didn't look any prettier. Wow. And he's spinning without identifying where the rim is, and he's just throwing it up against the backboard. And this guy is a first team all conference player this year. Had a great year. 
played well against BYU. Lucas in the lane. And Lucas has foul trouble even as we begin the second half. Lucas step back, short. Rebound. Don's come away with it. Sape. Oh, he's got it stolen away. Stefanini hesitated, and Gideon George got a piece of it. If you're going to shoot the step back, you cannot hesitate. You have to go with it right away. The hesitation just allows the defensive player to close that gap and, and contest the shot. I mean, that, that wasn't important. Uh, whistle and a foul. Stefanini reached in. You go back to the European possession out of the timeout. I mean, out of the half. I mean, just no communication whatsoever on the backside. Masalski, he switched when he didn't need to. And, and that's what caused the confusion there, and he left him wide open. How about that steal? Yeah, great athletic play by Bouye. Julian Grishman just came in the game. Didn't want to shoot in his first three seconds in the game. Top runner, perfect. And Todd Golden looking at Wishwain going, shoot it. And That's why you're in there. Wow, it's just harassing Barcelo. George dribbled into traffic, loose ball. Wishwain went for it, didn't get it. Loner, open, three, no. He gets a steal and a rebound in the last two possessions. When you come out a little sluggish. He missed that one. Tip, no good. Second try. Third try, still no good. Tape finally comes up with it and scores. Extra effort for the Dons on the glass. Marcelo gets bumped. Just relentless effort on the offensive glass. There's your first offensive rebound, second one. Just trying to play volleyball back in. It's finally on the fourth try. You corral it, and you're able to muscle it back through. Chavaz has three fouls now. I mean, we, we said it all first half. There were so many whistles that foul trouble, free throw shooting were going to be big factors. to Barcelo. Rishwain fouled him and Barcelo hits the shot. A chance for a three-point play. And Todd Golden came close to getting a technical foul. He thinks Barcelo's using that forearm to push off. And guess what? He was. He was. <laughs> but you know what's not a foul? Anything that's not called and that yeah. you get away with. I mean, look, easily that call has been made more times than not this college basketball season, but if you can get away with it, you know, you, you figure out what you can take advantage of. So now Rishwain has three fouls. And the lead for USF is down to two. Rishwain got bumped. That's Lucas's fourth. That's the second foul Tijon Lucas has committed against a jump shooter. Just trailing the play and kept his left arm on the hip. I mean, that's that's what it really came down to. You, you trail the play, you keep your hand on the left hip there, the officials are going to call it. Yeah, you and I love this young man. He, he's one of the most interesting players to talk to that we come across. And he knows better. Uh, those fouls, fouls three and four, if you're as important as he is to his team, you just can't commit those. Well, and, and when he goes out of game, we've seen this throughout the course of the season. What does it do? It shifts Alex Barcelo into a primary ball handler role, which can sometimes limit his availability to get shots. So now you've got to be creative. Once he gives the ball up in the half court, 
he's got to be able to find a rhythm. Bouye got up, blocked it. Rich Wayne is fouled by Barcelo going after the loose ball. That's Barcelo's third foul. Who's going to be left at the end of this game on the court? I'm going to go with Hunter Erickson. <laughs> we might have to dig deep into the depth charts, the rosters. Man. USF ball. Boz. No easy shot. In and out. Bruce wants it. He's calling for it. with the left hand yes I, mean, I love the maturation of 45 and blue he, he, you know you want to see a freshman big post up and, and yell at his guard give me the ball that kind of swagger means that you got to continue to play through 45 right now if you're Mark Hope Ross flipped it up and in he's so good at that I'd go right guy. back to Fusto on this possession yeah. if I'm BYU you're going to start him up high. Let's get him down on a roll down towards the paint and then get it to him. He rolled. He's open. Now clear out. Against Misalski. Not this time. And now Traore gets called going over the back. Good move. Just didn't finish. And this was the possession before. Cleared out. Went over that right. Tournament for them. They... They don't get a chance to add to the resume after tonight if they lose. No, uh, and, and it, it then comes down to what happens in other tournaments, and you don't want to leave things to chance. Indiana wins a couple games in the Big Ten tournament. All of a sudden, now you're out of the tournament. You have to win this game. This is a quad one win on the table for both of these teams. Bouye spun around the screen, got knocked to the floor, and now they call a foul. And what do they call? Spencer Johnson, a tripping foul? Mark Pope not happy. Neither yeah, coach has been happy. Yeah, both coaches are unhappy. We've had tons of fouls called. And the whistles are coming at weird times. I mean, Dave, he landed and then lifted his leg into John Spencer Johnson and then fell. I just... Three free throws for Denari Bouye. And he made them all. That's big call, obviously. Such a critical game. USF's lead is up to seven. Important minutes here with no Tijon Lucas. Good pass by Caleb Lucas. Uh, Lona, by the way. Now down low. No. Loner. Offensive rebound. Jump ball. And Mark Kovetsky is a big dude he's given the Dons good minutes off the bench you know plus minus doesn't mean everything but in the first half he was plus 11 he had the best plus minus of any player out on the floor and again if you don't know his story he's a native of Ukraine his father's a member of the security force in Ukraine and every minute he is consumed by Rory Shabazz with the jump shot good it's incredible that Markovetsky's on the court playing with his teammates but he is and he's playing maybe the best game he's played all year yeah it really is i mean it's not a box score game but it's it's his size and how disruptive he's been in the paint anchoring that back line of the defense marcello found johnson three yes and coach mark hopes bring him back in Tijon lucas and if you needed to know how important this game is, we got almost 14 minutes to play. Dijon Lucas has four fouls, and he's at the scores table. Bouye against Johnson. They call the offensive foul. Well, we, we, if we finish this game without any technical fouls, I'll be surprised. Lucas is coming in with his four personals. Atiki Ali Atiki, another young, raw, talented, bright, big man for BYU, comes in. Marcelo also out. Good pass. 
found Nell in the corner, and he hit the side of the backboard. Loner, three. Another offensive rebound. Lucas, three. Air ball. What in the world is going on? Look, on, on an offensive rebound, it's a great time to take a three-point shot. But after maybe two misses, I'm going to set something up, and I'm going to run some offense. You do start to wonder emotions running high we've had whistles a little bad blood between these two teams from the last time they met Everybody knows the stakes in this one Bouye is gonna attack He should have attacked. Yeah, well, he found his teammate wide open. You can't leave Shabazz that open He hits the three what happened was Lucas Tijon Lucas cheated over towards him that left that space wide open into the lane. Markovetsky, that big man. I mean, he is just a force off the leg of uh, the big Ukrainian. Watch this. And Lucas took his his head off of Shabazz. And, and, and when he lost vision of where his man was, he spaced the floor a little bit. That was an excellent pass. You just can't, you cannot survive that against USF. If you leave Bouye and Shabazz wide open, you lose. Lucas making his way closer to the basket. Much needed bucket for BYU. Long way to go. Well, now it's Marcelo can get going here. He has not shot the ball well. Just two of five. He needs more attempts. Yeah, USF is making it hard on him. Uh, he should have north of 12 shots in this game. Yeah, that was tough. Good defense. Rebound though. Dons. Shabazz finds Rich Wayne. Kept that foot down. Being hounded by Lucas. Shabazz, three. No. And a tip ball. Here comes Barcelo. Johnson pulls up in transition. Good for three. How about that for a confident shot? He's given BYU a spark, and he can score in bunches. His first two buckets of the game. Masalski got fouled. Huge stakes tonight in the quarterfinals of this West Coast Conference tournament. On a Saturday game, we'll face a red-hot St. Mary's team in another semifinal matchup later on Monday night. I mean, this tournament is just loaded. It, it really is. It's the best year in the history of the West Coast Conference. They've had a lot of great players in their history, some of the all-time greats, but they've never had a season top to bottom like this. And nothing is easy, even just inbounding the ball out of a timeout not easy I, I, you just wonder Stefanini steps into a jumper hits it I mean, there is pressure big pressure in this game John Lucas Rejected. Markovetsky, another good defensive play. Bouye steps through and finishes. I mean, that is a huge play by Markovetsky. He has been outstanding. What a story. Kick ball. I mean, uh, Bouye, Bouye is one of the all-time greats in the history of the Hilltop. But other than Bouye, he, who's played better than he has tonight? Nobody. Great rotation. Back line. Hand up, active. Bouye in transition, able to find a way to cut through and finish. I mean, it's been it's been a really impressive performance by Bouye. Salski secures the rebound. Barcelo couldn't finish there. Volodymyr Markovetsky. He has played like an all-conference type really big tonight. I mean, defensively, his size and how disruptive he's been. Bob Masalski finishes. Great look from Khalil Shabazz. Biggest lead for the Dons. It's up to 10 with 10 minutes to play. It's go time for BYU. Their season's on the line. Triore got fouled. Bouye is barking at that official. Now he's got to be careful. You watch this little dribble penetration again. You're, you're reading the back line there if you're Shabazz and, and you're trying to see what boost is going to do and 
Kind of got caught in no man's land. Boz has 15. Bouye has 16. Marcelo, meanwhile, has been hounded and he throws it away. Stefanini on the break. Layup good. And Mark Pope's going to want a timeout. They need one. Their execution at the offensive end of the floor is disrupting their ability to defend at the opposite end. When you play poorly at the offensive end of the floor, you give up transition buckets. How many did LeBron numbers? have tonight? What do you have, 56? That's pretty good. 56 pretty good. for LeBron James. Well, I'm sure now is post-game watching this one. He knows big stakes in the WCC. 12-point lead for USF, biggest lead of the game, 8-0 run. BYU's got to get it going now, and this guy's got to get it going. Alex Barcelo, shot up and no good, rebound. Josh Koonin just in the game. You and I were talking during the break. Shabazz and Bouye can just harass you, and Barcelo hasn't been open because the defense that Shabazz has played. That was a real tough pass. Somehow it went to Shabazz, who hits the three. So everything going the Don's way these last few minutes, even after making the three, there was Khalil Shabazz right in the pocket of Alex Barcelo, who just can't get any daylight. He throws it away again, but BYU keeps possession. Nell, they need some shots to go down. That one doesn't. Rebound out of bounds off of USF. Mark Pope knows his team's in trouble. The backs are against the wall. Down 15 right now. They got to figure out a way to get stops. I mean, that's a little bit lucky, unlucky bounce if you're if you're BYU. But you got to really lock in defensively right now if you're the Cougars. Marcelo. They're forcing him to go negative step. He needs going away from his basket. And they call a reach-in foul on the sideline. I mean, the point you were making is worth repeating. Shabazz and Bouye especially, although a team effort, they are just swarming and harassing Marcelo and Lucas and Spencer Johnson. Everything's been difficult. Marcelo finds Triore, had it knocked away. Yeah, he's got that look in his eye. He was going to shoot that thing. Masolski, great offensive rebound. And then Nell reached in. You got, you got some unhappy players on both sides. Some tempers are starting to flare up. Everybody is anticipating that the call is going to go against them. So because of that, every time the whistle blows, you have both teams looking at the official like, what are you calling? And that's a difficult place as a player. And I'll tell you who else it's difficult for, these officials. Yeah. Because now you've got a bunch of chirping going on every single time, and you're trying to manage the emotions of this game, understanding the significance of it as well. And stepping in, Trevin Nell and Alan Masalski. Masalski just shoved him, trying to get open. Double team came. Now they called a foul against Johnson. No, they call Masalski for hitting Spencer Johnson in the head. Now Masalski's limping toward the sideline. What was that called? They called Masalski hitting Johnson in the face, I guess. Okay, I mean, yeah, there's, there's contact there. I didn't see that originally. So now we're guessing too. Yeah. Uh, just uh, 17 fouls against the Dons. Maybe BYU can use the free throw line to get back in this game. They need these. What worked early for BYU? Great offense. Rebound of the putback, Doug. What worked early? Attacking the paint. With the foul situation being what it is and how they're calling the game, if I'm BYU, I attack the paint. I get to the free throw line, I slow this game down, and allows you to set up your defense and manufacture points at the free throw line. Bouye, crossover move. Jamari Bouye. Good defense. Rebound, put back dunk. No, Tape, I think, is the one who's going to be at the free throw line. 
but before he shoots free throws, we've got another time. Two guards, I, they are a little undersized, although Jamari Bouye, I mean, he's got some length to him. He, I'm, I'm not sure I would call him undersized, but the combo of the two of them, maybe you would. They can hang with anybody. Okay, it's the first free throw. 14 point lead, 7 for 5, 45 to go. You're Todd Golden, you're sitting there saying, stay disciplined, stay focused. Don't deviate from what we've been doing here in the second half. Guys, we're going to win this game, and we're going to go to the NCAA tournament. I mean, that's how important this game is for San Francisco. It's been since 1998. Todd Golden told us what, he was 11? Yeah, he was a young man. Long time since the Dons have been there. Uh, they may already have locked their place in, but I, uh, if they lose this game, I wouldn't be totally comfortable if I were them on Selection Sunday. Three out, another rebound, Markovetsky. He's been great. Great. He is a huge man. But it's the little things, right? I mean, that's the difference of winning the game sometimes, it's the little things. Know your role and execute to the best of your ability within your role. Yes, that's a big screen. Shabazz used it, came up short, rebound Gideon George. BYU looking for something easy. Alex Marcello just looking for a shot. Anything. He got bumped by Rishwain. And, and, and look, getting downhill. That's what I talked about. You gotta get downhill, you gotta attack. That's four against Rishwain. Only eight tonight for Alex Barcelo. And he bounces that first one down. BYU can't leave any points out there from here on out. It's tough for Alex Barcelo to find any rhythm in this game tonight because of the defense that this, these guards play with it for, for San Francisco. Pope trying to change it up a little bit, and Javarin Bouye just broke the press all by himself. Markovetsky, no. Rebound, out of bounds off of the big man. Not a strong seat. All the great stuff he's done tonight. That's not the strength of this game. It's worth noting, I mean, we watch San Francisco play. They're a top 20 defense nationally in defensive efficiency. Yeah, it looks like that, too, when you watch them play. Bouye almost stole it away. Back door, no, but a foul. Gideon George, good cut. And for both these coaches, you know, I mean, this, they know, like, BYU had to play last night. They played their way into this game. San Francisco knows 40 minutes. Everything you got doesn't matter how many minutes anybody's playing tonight. You've got an off day tomorrow before you get to the semifinals on Monday. Well, it's amazing this time of year, too. I mean, North Carolina used the same five players for the entire second half in their incredible win at Cameron today. And last night, Portland won in the second round of this WCC tournament and basically played one player off the bench for five total minutes. And that's it. Went with the starting five the whole way, otherwise. And they'll probably do the same thing tonight. They probably will. We'll see them That's going to be a great game. It, it's, they, don't, of, they don't necessarily like each other. Speaking of two right programs now. that are at odds at the moment. Santa Clara and Portland, second quarterfinal matchup. About a half hour after this one is done. More pressure from BYU after the free throw makes. Shabazz, he was in a bad spot there and just used his quickness to get out of it. Masolski in transition, dunks it home. The guards and the ability to catch rip and go up the sideline and beat two defensive players are giving a numbers advantage to USF. It's hard to press them. That's where Masalski is just more skilled than Markovetsky. Getting the ball there, that is his sweet spot. Man, Gideon George got close to the rim and then missed wide right. Time's running out on BYU. Under six minutes to play, and maybe their hopes of making the NCAA tournament are on the line here. Stefanini back to Masalski. That's a foul. I thought it was. They call a foul. I thought he traveled before he got fouled. 
And great execution in transition. They throw the ball ahead. Masalski that time caught it, went right to the rim. The timely pass, where the pass went, the window in which it was passed to was outstanding. Masalski can be adventures at the free throw line at times. Where he made that one. Let's go. Got better as the year went on. First team all WCC player. Came out tonight in the early minutes looking like a mess. <laughs> I mean, he did. He's played a lot better as the game has gone on. And BYU has really struggled from deep tonight. Just 3 of 16 from beyond the arc. Marcelo runner. Good. I love when he curls on that, that weak side screen action and gets his shoulders downhill. We talk so much about his three-point shooting ability, but he, he can really score it at all three levels. He's very crafty. They need him to be really crafty the rest of this game. All right, just bowled over. The saucer is slipping all over the place. Man, he is, he's beat up. I think he just told Coach he's... I told Coach he's going to go? He is hurting. Yeah, this is a very <laughs> tough young man. He transferred in from USD San Diego. He's mainly a rebounder there. He's going to foul because he's going to try to get out of the game. Yeah. Todd Golden did not want him to do that. I don't think he did. No, I'm going to say no. <laughs> Gave it up, and a fraction of a second later, a guy who's hurt and can't walk reaches in and sort of grabs, and that's a flagrant one. See if BYU can take advantage. A couple of free throws plus the ball. And George missed. And Tommy Nunez just came over and said, by rule, he grabbed him to stop play. And so it's got to be adjudicated this way. Yeah. And that's what I said. I mean, it's not necessarily on the officials is just that it, it, that kind of thing just makes the game look bad 12 point lead 504 to go BYU got a point out of it they keep the ball George three in and out Triore offensive rebound put back is good leads down to 10 how big was that foul now it was huge and you got no Masalski on the floor First team all conference player back in the locker room. BYU's got life. A minute ago, it didn't feel that way. Bouye, three, way short. Try to get this curl action with Alex Marcello on the handoff. There it is. Marcello, yes! And that's what you, you, you gotta keep going back to that well. Step back three. In and out and back in. Huge for USF. And Todd Golden calls a timeout. What a big shot from Khalil Shabazz. The nation. And I'm just so blown away with the, with the guard play of San Francisco. Though. And the shot making, the defense. bouye has got five rebounds, four assists to go along with his 16 points. I mean, what a game for him. Boz has made big shot after big shot in this second half. BYU needs a lot of big shots now. Gideon George got fouled. Well, the free throw line should be the ally of BYU. Both teams in the double bonus. But you're down 11 with under four to play. You got a chance to get points on the board without the clock moving. 73% as a team. Getting George 70% on the season. Very tough game for him. He does have six points. He's one for seven from the field. With no Seneca Knight with the other injury problems along the way for BYU. If Gideon George is not contributing, it's, it's tough for Mark Pope's team. And Mark Pope takes out Tijon Lucas, who's got four personal fouls. They've kind of massaged the minutes here in the second half. Try to keep him out on the floor, keep him fresh, make sure mentally he's fresh as much as he is physically fresh. 
so he doesn't foul. Kuhn almost had it stolen away. And he's got to be careful with the ball. Gets it to Stefanini. Pass. Markovetsky gets it and dunks it home. He's just too big. Incredible story. And everything that's going on in his life playing the game of his USF career. Loner way short on the three. Rebound Dons. Just over three minutes to go. And with Masalski banged up a little bit, I mean, you're going to continue to leave him out there. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a good pass. It got deflected way up in the air, but the 7 2 guy came up with it first. Now Shabazz. Oh, that looked dangerous. He gets fouled. Sometimes it's good to be 7 2. Catch it. Turn. Right there. Dunk it. <laughs> I mean, that time, he's good when he's not on the move. Like, if, if, if he just has to pivot, catch, pivot, and finish, good. Running in transition, maybe not so much. All right, first free throw missed. Well, champ week tomorrow on Sunday on the women's side. We got five different title games for you. Five? Miami NC's five of them. Let's count them. ACC, SEC on ESPN. Then flip over to ESPN2, Atlantic 10. You got the Big 10. That'll be a good one. And then in the Pac-12, John Stanford, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, tomorrow on ESPN2. That's five. I love it. It's getting off day tomorrow. You can watch all the college hoops we want. I will. George, down low. Triore will go to the free throw line. Part of it, and I'm, I'm not necessarily taking the officials off the hook because I don't think it's been a beautifully officiated game. However, I mean, both these coaches talk to us about being physical, being tough. I mean, they were pre, and that's what the two games during the regular season sort of dictated. They were tough fights down low. Traore makes one of two. More pressure. Kunin is going to be the press breaker. Shabazz smartly didn't take the shot. Stefanini goes right on by for the layup. Help side is hugging on the weak side. When you hug on the weak side, it creates a massive seam to attack. Too easy. BYU's season may be on the line right here. Oh, another foul called. That's the protest from Khalil Shabazz. He's put the ball down. His fourth. I don't know. BYU in the field as of tonight, according to Lenardi. Well, this, this will move him out. I think it will. And they, they're going to need a lot of help to get back in over the rest of champion. USF on the other side had done a lot of great work all season long. Probably would be in even if they lost tonight's game. And if this result holds up, the 14-point lead with two minutes left to go here, the net's going to go up because it's another quad one victory. It's another win away from home. Uh, there's a lot of things to love about San Francisco's resume this year. Yeah, I, to me, this sews it up. If they hang on and beat BYU here, it's still not over. You know, for BYU, you have two minutes to try to make a, a miraculous comeback at this point in time based on how USF has played. Now you need to force turnovers. Get to the free throw line. Probably some missed free throws from USF. They foul Kunin when he catches it. I, I think this is a good idea to foul early. Kunin yeah. is a 63% free throw shooter. He's not great at the line. Hasn't attempted one. Hasn't scored in the game today. Also important to, 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 to focus on the fact that there are five Dons with four fouls. 
Don still want overtime. Maybe out of players by then. Well, and that's why you got to drive into their bodies. I mean, like with the way that the game has been called, just just uh, make the adjustment and understand. Like, hey, if I, if I get into the body of the defensive player, the offensive player has been rewarded with that foul more often than not in this game. We've seen a lot of charges. Yeah. So BYU got one missed free throw. Second one coming for Coonan. They need points and they need them fast. They missed them both. As long as he's on the floor, that Cougar's strategy may be target him. Play an analytics game that Todd Golden plays all the time. Yeah, that's how he does it. Johnson got bumped. So he'll go to the free throw line. And Stefani's gone. Yeah, Stefanini is or Stefanini, yes, sorry. out. He did make some big plays. I mean, he's he's struggled down the home stretch for USF. And they bring Rich Wayne in, and Rich Wayne, he has four fouls. He does. So now Spencer Johnson. He never started a game in his BYU career. He's offense off the bench. That's his role. Missed both his free throws tonight. Not a great free throw shooter for a guy who's such a good overall shooter. But he made that one. That's huge. Second one, no good. Rebound. Markovetsky. You foul him right away, too. Yeah, he gets fouled. I mean, BYU, how many free throws have they missed here in the last minute? Like four? Well, Markovetsky is a 61% free throw shooter. Hasn't gotten to the line a bunch this year. This is going to be a very, very, very long one minute and 54 seconds, yeah, folks. It is. Hopefully you've got time on your hands because we're not going anywhere for a while. Right, and, and we have another game, of course, after that. Now USF has missed three free throws in a row. Volodymyr Markovetsky just remarkable. Nine rebounds off the bench. Or four rebounds, excuse me, in 15 minutes. But it's the block shots, it's the alternative shots, and just his, his presence out on the floor. Marcello ran into that wall. Johnson, layup good. I, I try to deny and force them to pass the ball to Kunin. Or Markovetsky. And then I foul again. BYU calls a timeout, and I'm sure that's part of what. Yeah, that sounded out of character. Uh, you, you, you heard the surprise in my voice. Uh, Did you know that Silk Sonic is essentially Bruno Mars? And uh, now I'm going to sound like an old guy, which I am. Anderson Pock, is that his uh, compatriot? Timeout, USF. Good defense by BYU. Mark so Hope is not making it easy on the Dons. Continue to pressure. And you you want to force the ball back to Kunin. He's going to make four a much longer shot. I think. Yeah, I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. We'll see how Champ Week plays out. BYU still has some excellent resume wins from the non-conference season. Bouye against the pressure. To the top a. Foul. They didn't foul him. They're going to foul Kunin. They put Josh Coonan back on the free throw line. They've done an excellent job here, BYU has, of targeting the right potential free throw shooters. I mean, they, are, they have done a really good job of setting that yeah. out, knowing what they want to do, how, how they want to let the ball go. Caleb Lohner was given enough space, but they came and packed him as soon as they threw the ball to him. It was a smart play. Coonan misses another one. Well, it's not a shock that Mark Pope would handle those in-game strategic moves about as well as you could. I mean, he's just an excellent game coach. People talk about why has the conference gotten so much better. It's coaching. Look at these two. Look at the two we have in the next game. Yeah. Shante Leggins, Herb Sunday. Really good coaches. Has missed four free throws here in the last minute. They are trying to leave the door open for BYU, but BYU's got to make a shot. Marcelo can't even get a shot off. Lucas down low. Triore steps through. Lost the ball going up. Bouye comes away with it. Jamari Bouye 
Lucas tried to steal it. He's got four fouls, remember. Lucas doesn't want to commit number five. And now keep away Kunin gets fouled. 102 on the clock. Those were precious seconds from BYU's perspective ticking away. And Jamari Bouye, that was some tough love for Josh Kunin. Like, yo. Well, Todd I'm Golden had some tough love for him from the sideline, too. I believe he said, please make a free throw. 0 for 4. Not good. There's one. <laughs> uh, every once in a while as a coach, it's hard to hold that in. Both of them. Like he's been making them all night. Never touched the rim. This has been impressive for USF. Look. Just glued to Barcelo. Finally gets to the rim for the layup. Mark Pope will use his final timeout. 11-point lead for the Dons. Let me, let me just take this moment to say okay. what Alex Barcelo has done has been remarkable at BYU. His team is up against it here. We got college basketball live coming up next. Crispin, Cuff, KC. Oh, that's great. 30 minutes of those guys. There's a lot to talk about. They're excited. I know they are. They funneled the ball back to Josh Coonan. I mean, look, if you're Mark Pope, you're going, you're just trying hoping maybe somehow we can extend the game give ourselves as many chances as possible and you should I mean the, he's a competitor I mean he wants to be a competitor he wants his team to fight he will give to them exactly what he asks of them I've long thought now this one is a little different because it's a double digit lead and has been so the, the decision is sort of forced upon Mark Pope but I think coaches should be much more aggressive fouling earlier, trying to extend the game. Todd Golden fouls when he's up two. <laughs> he, 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 I don't need to preach to him. Both free throws good, so Josh Kuhn has gotten his act together at the line. Here's Barcelo. Lucas didn't shoot the three. BYU cannot hesitate. They got to go. Barcelo, no. Ball tapped to Shabazz. Lucas doesn't want to foul out. Shabazz is playing keep away. Lucas steals it away. Marcelo will shoot that one. In and out. And the bounds off of Kunin. 25.6 seconds to go. San Francisco's going to the NCAA tournament, folks. You know, there's, there's a lot of tournaments going on where you'd be like, hey, unless you get the automatic qualifier, you're not going. That's not the WCC. I mean, you look at the strength of this conference, San Francisco is going to be in the field this year. It's First time a, since 1998. A great accomplishment. Lucas. Rebound. Rishwain. Final seconds ticking off. Jamari <laughs> Bouye still diving on the floor. Nobody, uh, look, Todd Golden's done a terrific job. And he gets a lot of credit. Kyle Smith sort of laid the foundation to me, Sean. Nobody, and Todd's still coaching up his big man. He's going to need big time on Monday against Gonzaga. But Jamari Bouye is the number one person responsible for USF accomplishing this. There's no doubt about it. I mean, what he's meant, how active he is. He's going to celebrate. Yes, he is. And I don't blame him. And they called a technical on him. Wow. They called a technical on him. Should Bouye just dribble he out? He should have just dribbled out and not even taken the dunk. I yeah. mean, that's that's 
But again, we're talking about a team that hasn't been to the NCAA tournament since 1998. A monumental win here. BYU will shoot that one and score it. And it's not going to matter. The horn sounds. It's not official, but Todd Golden's team, I think, just locked it up.